Good evening. We're going to go taste uh, brand new seedling apples, but let's see what we can find new and old and tasting again and reconfirming or deciding stuff isn't as good as I thought it was and all that fun stuff. Okay, we're going to start with this little russet topped apple here, an unknown unlabeled seedling that got grafted onto this tree and it took a long time to come into bearing. It was originally from 2011. I'm gonna pick this one because it's got a little damage and it might be riper. Mmm, I like. Mmm. Mmm. Good. Uh, this is definitely ripe. It's very sweet, very rich, uh, delicious, uh, fruity flavor. Can't really nail anything specific, just kind of, yeah, fruity. Um, very tannic though. The skin is has a lot of tannic acid. Uh, this would, you know, I'm sure this would make a good cider apple. I mean, I don't see how it couldn't. It tastes incredibly sweet. It's not sharp, uh, but the flavor is really high and it has tannin, so. So uh, tannin is good for you. I would eat this apple as a dessert apple because it's absolutely delicious. It does have some pink flesh. The pink part tastes even better. It's a russety topped apple. I don't know if I'd quite go so far as to call it a russet. Tag on this says Triceratops. I gave all these funny names when I grafted them onto this tree because they were just these like random seedlings. And since these seem to be ripe, I'm just gonna pick another one. See, that one doesn't have a lot of russet, but this one does. Okay, here's flaxen. I haven't really been paying attention to this apple, so let's let's take some of these bags off and take a closer look. I've been seeing a lot of this when I have the apples bagged, even in the white bags. They get this weird discoloration and bruising. So how I put these bags on is I just actually twist the neck and just leave it. Uh, I don't staple it or anything. So I, I rip down one uh, corner of the bag pretty far, put the stem in here, and then I just twist this up. And since these are pretty big, sometimes you can fit two apples in one. Uh, this is a different uh, winter cooking apple that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's see what we have for flax in here. That one was in a bag. Let's pick this one because it looks interesting. It looks like we have some pink flesh in flax in this year, which I've seen a little bit before. Maybe a little prone to sunburn. Okay. It's good. I can taste the pink a little bit, maybe a little hint of citrus. It's just nice. Very crisp, very crunchy. You hear that? Interesting. So if the scab resistance holds up on this apple, it's getting more interesting. Uh, more red flesh. That's cool. Last time we tasted this, the flesh was not very pink, but it was a bad year for red fleshed apples in general. So in some climates, maybe this will develop more. You know, it's quite a bit different this year and more interesting. Really, I think we got another couple weeks on that one until it's probably at its best. Okay, I know these aren't ripe, but I just wanted to show you guys sugar wood, especially for those of you who got scions of it last year. Uh, this is how it bears if you don't thin it. It was so heavy that it bent this wimpy little tree over and I haven't uh, put it back yet. Uh, but it's not ready. It's a fairly late apple and it, it hangs really well on the tree too. So it can be ripened and then left to hang until you can get around to picking it for cider. Grenadine Gold Rush 11.4. As you can see, there's a lot of nice apples, a lot of pretty big apples on there. Grenadine Gold Rush 11.4. Tastes like dirt. Okay, so we have an apple with nice pink flesh, good looking, good size, tastes a little like dirt. Uh, not ripe yet though. Already got a not great texture. It's just kind of going a little foamy and coarse grained and not exciting. So that's kind of a bad sign because, uh, you know, it could have all kinds of other good characteristics. The dirt flavor could go away, it could get more other flavor, get sweeter. But if the texture goes down while that's happening, which is typical of a lot of red flesh apples, including a lot of the parents I use, then that's a no-go, right? That's one of the things we're trying to improve. I'm just gonna unbag a few of these apples so they have a chance to color up, maybe. I think a lot of the bagging I did this year was kind of ended up being unnecessary. It's hard to know what to bag and what not to bother with. 
This is an apple that is tentatively named Dutch Master. I'm thinking these aren't ready yet, but I'm gonna maybe try one of these here because these look like they could be a little more ready. At its best, this is a really neat looking apple. I'll cut in some pictures that I took a couple of years ago. Um, they're a little hit and miss on that though. Ooh, definitely not right. Oh, that's so tart. What do we have here? Look at this monster. This looks like something from the Cox's Orange Pippin group just because of these big wide red stripes. So it's probably like a Cherry Cox Rubiot is what I'm guessing. No, it's Rubinette Rubiot, but Rubinette is also a uh, Cox's Orange Pippin offspring. I think I've tasted this one before. Very poor color on that bagged one. And there's one on the ground it looks like. Yep, that's the same apple. Looks overripe. Eh, overripe. This one. Well, now that's a hefty apple there. This does look ripe. Smells ripe too. See the big wide red stripes on there? That's a Cox's Orange Pippin characteristic that often comes through in offspring. It's already mealy. Let's try a different one. It's very tart. Pretty low sugar, already going mealy, not a ton of flavor. Two, three weeks ago, this would probably be a good cooking apple. And it's big, which is nice uh, for processing, but it is a little low on, on interesting flavor. Not too exciting. You know what, since those were overripe, we might as well pick this last one and try it too. Same thing, super tart, not very sweet, not much flavor. There's a monster. Oops, better taste that, it broke off. I don't think it was ready. I was just a little rough with it there. It's just okay, it's edible. Fairly tart, not a lot of sugar. The texture isn't amazing. It almost seems over the over the top already. Let's try this one. Nothing to write home about. You can stick it in a pie, squish it for juice, but it is pretty tart. This one, already gone. Ugh. Ugh. Mealy already. Okay, now this one looks interesting, folks. And I have tasted this already, actually. I was just out here in the uh, apple breeding seedling trial rows, and I just picked this monstrosity. I was actually just trying to look at it on the tree here, and it fell off, but it's gigantic. And if you could see in there, the flesh is definitely pink. It's kind of a light weight. Um, feels pretty good. This is a pink lady cross. Look at the size of that. And this tree produced at least four apples that size or bigger. Uh, quite a bit bigger even. Rubyot Pink Lady 13.3. Okay, here's another one off the same tree. Look at the size of that thing. Uh, at least two of them split. I ate the other half of this one. Look at that. Look at that. And these aren't even like really good conditions. You know, if you grew this thing under much better conditions. Yeah, wow. It's very pleasant. This is real interesting. Um, you can see it has nice, pretty pink flesh. Uh, the texture is really nice. I wouldn't really call it, it wasn't tart like some of those other apples. You could just use more sugar, um, but it's okay. And it's pleasant to eat overall. The flavor, like there is some mild berry-like red flesh type of flavors in there, but they are pretty muted. I mean, they're not, not very forward and this is kind of typical of very large apples. Like they're usually not the most flavorful apples, right? It's almost like they get blown up with water and diluted. Okay, so not stellar, but very interesting. Uh, really fun to eat. I would definitely finish this. I'm thinking like if I ever started eating one of these, like I'm gonna finish it. Um, it's just fun to eat because it's so big and the flesh is good and it has a lot of juice. Uh, nothing unpleasant about it. It doesn't really have any of the negative characteristics that we usually see in red fleshed apples, except perhaps for a little bit low on sugar. But you know, imagine this under much better conditions. Look at this tree. Look, look at that. It's one inch in diameter and it produced a bunch of big, beautiful apples. And, oh wait, this is the tree over here. So sorry, it's an inch and a half in diameter. Um, here's the last one. Produced a bunch of gigantic apples. 
imagine growing these under better conditions, picking apples this side or, or bigger, you know, taking your kids out to the orchard or visitors and stuff and handing them one of these and I bite into it and see the pink flesh. Um, you know, this is, a, this is actually a pretty novel and exciting uh, little, little big apple. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to eating the rest of these and just getting more of a feel for it and, you know, finishing a couple and also tasting them when my taste buds aren't blown out because I think I'm going to get just a little bit more of that, um, uh, you know, fruity berry type of flavor that uh, we're always looking for in the red fleshed apples because it, I do taste it a little bit, but you know, I've been, I've been, I've tasted some pretty amazingly strong apples here and some very tart apples and just a lot of apples. So We'll, uh, I'll report back on this later. This looks ready. Okay, Rubiot Rubinet 13.1. We have tasted this before. So uh, it seems a little underripe. Something really interesting in there, like um, like a very volatile or aromatic, like volatile oil type of flavor, like uh, maybe like citrus peel or pine resin, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, overall though, not a ton of flavor. Let's try this side. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It almost tastes like some kind of a chemical, petroleum chemical taste or something. Other than that, uh, it's a pretty tart apple, nice fine grained, uh, almost leaning towards uh, what I would call waxy flesh. Probably more of a cooker, which is what I said before about this apple. I've seen it get a lot redder than this, so there's a uh, potential there. There's some more. Terrible burnout. Look at the burnout on that. This one here has these weird um, wavy edged crinkly leaves. Very peculiar. I noticed this before. Let's taste the fruit. Hmm. It tastes a little underripe. It's pretty tart. Got a lot of russet on the top there. There's one more over there. I think I'm gonna wait another week or two and taste another one of these. At this point, it's just an apple. I'll throw it in the basket and maybe use it in a pie. Oh, we missed one. This one looks almost identical to the one right next to it. Let's see what that tastes like. So this one has no tag, but it's probably gonna be another Rubinette, Rubiot or Rubiot Rubinette. Not ripe, doesn't taste too promising. Kind of similar to a lot of these right in here. Uh, a lot of those crosses, Rubiot, Rubinette, are turning out to be kind of pedestrian. It's just an apple. Okay, now this one looks interesting. Look at that. Should I pick the nice one? I don't know. Oh, we have two different trees here, actually. They're both very dark red. Although these here in back in the shade with these darker bags, are not not coloring up. Oh, you guys, this is a hard call. I just think another week or two on that one. I hate to pick it, it's the last one, and it looks so good. The little damaged one I just ate, you know, it had a barely some red staining, uh, nothing too exciting going on with that. These just don't look quite ripe yet. We'll probably be doing this again in about two or three weeks to catch some of these. Okay, so we have some early drops of Ice Princess here. Tastes like a Christmas tree. The ones that remain on the tree should ripen very late. So uh, I think I'm gonna unbag them all. Okay, this apple has a nickname, just a nickname, uh, Big Red, because it's a good size red flushed apple. It's supposed to be a grenadine golden russet, but I have to wonder if it doesn't have a different parent. It doesn't really look like a cross of those two apples, but it could be. Again, I need another two weeks on that one. There's another drop. That's getting closer. We'll see what it does in a couple of weeks. I'm a little disturbed that Ice Princess is dropping so many early. This looks like a pretty useless little apple and not ripe yet. A lot of funky, stunted looking things. What's this? Oh, huh, this looks more interesting. This must be a cherry cox. 
Yep, Cherry Cox Rubiot. Again, I can tell because of the character of these stripes. Not ripe. Doesn't taste like cherries yet. There's still time. Well, maybe those will color up in the next... Uh, that one was looking more like three to four weeks, but we'll see. Gotta live dangerously. I think we picked this a little early. Hmm. Hmm. This is pretty sweet, at least uh, pretty low acid. It tastes dusty. If dusty is a flavor, or it feels dusty. Most of the flavors are kind of like just, you know, red apple flavors. Um, it's just okay. It's a little pedestrian, a little peculiar though peculiarly pedestrian. Okay, here's an apple that I think has high potential for cider from what I've tasted this year. Probably very sweet, uh, russet top, hard, woody, very tannic, too tannic for a dessert apple. All right, so woody flesh should press really well, very thick skin, tough skin with lots of tannin. Flavor is strong, but not nearly as strong as like Triceratops over there, the first thing we tasted, which was just, you know, flat out the strongest tasting apple by far of any anything we've tasted today. But it's similar, it's just got like kind of a rich fruity flavor. It tastes like it has a lot of sugar, uh, pretty low acid, so probably not a good single varietal cider apple, but um, it's promising. This This has legit potential as a cider apple. Who's this? Who's this here? Who's this beautiful dark red? Look at that color. Look at it. That's cherub. Yep, indeed. That is cherub. Really dark red this year. In previous pictures and stuff, you probably wouldn't have seen it as this dark. Now, I think, you know, you could eat this right now, but it's, it's certainly not going to be at its best. We could just give the tree a little shake here. One fell off. Oh well, we'll have to eat it. That's not as red because it was in the baggie. Yeah, it doesn't look ripe. Hmm, it's still really good. But so uh, this has a lot of water core this year, so that changes the flavor. But it's pretty good. It's actually fairly ripe. Not a lot of pink flesh in that one, but you know, the longer it hangs, the more pink flesh it will develop. A lot of these have been cross-pollinated, so, and I probably won't grow any of them out, or very few, if any, so these will be available. I just really want to find one that's messed up so I can eat another one. <laughs> okay, here's another Wixen Rubiot cross that looks very bad this year. The cherub here is a winner. Okay, here's some columnar trees here. This one produced a lot of big, beautiful red apples, but they were thin, watery, kind of a foamy flesh. Still maybe promising for breeding because they were really nice looking apples. Here's one down here. So that's kind of an average sized uh, one off the tree. And it does have pink flesh, although it's not as dark as I expected. There you go, there's another one. It just tastes kind of uh, thin and acidic, although there is some berry flavor in there. This one looks interesting to me. Just looking at it, I have a feeling it's gonna have some of the Wixen flavor, some kind of savory umami kind of stuff going on. It's interesting, little flat apples. Only two on the tree, first year it's ever produced, uh, Wixen Rubiot 13.4. But I'm thinking we got at least another two weeks on that one. I have a really good feeling about that little flat donut apple there. Look at this. Now I've picked uh, through two apples off this and eaten them already. We're gonna eat this one. Um, I could see that it has water core all in here. Big patch there. I'm gonna try to find a spot that doesn't have water core, maybe over here. That is almost solid water core right there. You can see, you see that translucent looking patchy, bruisey looking stuff? That's water core. Are you ready? Oh wait, what is this? Rubiot Pink Parfait 15.6. So here's two related red flushed apples crossed together. 
Mm. So interestingly, it's not red fleshed. Delicious watermelon candy flavor. Kind of a firm, crispy flesh. Very strong fruit candy flavors. I'd say watermelon. Pretty tart. This is what water core looks like. It's a physiological disorder. Some people really like it. Um, I know in Japan they actually encourage it. Some apples are more prone to it. If this is on an established tree and the tree is pretty healthy and has everything it needs, um, it probably won't do this at all. It's adding to the flavor and confusing the flavor a little bit, so it's hard to know for sure how this is going to turn out in the long run. But it's uh, very promising so far. Really delicious flavors. And that's after having tasted a whole ton of different apples. So I'm going to save this and taste it again tomorrow when my taste buds are recalibrated. The most interesting was this Triceratops apple. Incredible flavor. Just really rich, delicious flavor. Would make a great dessert apple if the tannin was a little lower. Again, I would eat it anyway. Uh, this one... Very interesting. This was the Pink Lady and Ruby Out. I think it's Ruby Out Pink Lady. I really like this apple. Again, it's not like it's a little bit mild and a little bit polite, but uh, it's just fun to eat. And it's got that cool pink flesh and it's huge. And the one we just tasted, the watermelon flavored one with all the water core, this one right here, uh, Ruby Out Pink Parfait. That one's very interesting to keep an eye on. You know, I don't remember what else we went. Those are the ones that stand out to me. Yeah, I'll have to come back in two or three weeks and see how some of the other stuff is.